conversations that you are about to hear are excerpts of a conference call placed from the NFO Grain Office in Jamestown, North Dakota. Both of the directors from North Dakota and the grain coordinators from Bismarck, Bemidji, and North St. Paul marketing areas took part. One of those on the call had some concern that something was wrong, and he thought the officials of the NFO should know about it, so he provided a tape of the conference call. At the regular board meeting conducted June 30, 1970, the National Board of Directors voted the establishment of a national custodial account. The excerpts that you have just heard 
advocate the breaking of the national policy by taking over funds of the organization. The commodity programs are now designed so that the membership dues and fees can be taken out at the custodial level on an automatic dues payment program. The activation of the resolution would take the control of funds away from the National Board of Directors and give it to local grain coordinators and others. All funds could be cut off at the marketing area level. In the last part of this resolution, and I quote, only funds that are not used in the local area will be sent into the home office, end of quote. Instead of having a national organization, each local area operating under such a proposal could hire their own people, operating not as a national organization, but as many separate units throughout the U.S. This, we feel, would definitely destroy the NFO. Uh, on them three, on the three possibilities, there is, the, is one that uh, we, uh, <coughs> is that one that we would, uh, We would have to, that it would be necessary to uh, get approval from the National Board of Dir Directors by resolution permitting us to set up that account. It means that we'd have to send this resolution that I talked to you to the National Directors, okay. the National Board, and get approval of it. Uh, that's impossible, I suppose. That's correct. It takes too long. Okay. Well, now you guys at that meeting were talking about that we want to get this back in the hands of the members. Right. Okay. So, number two, form a co-op on your own is contract contract with the national and none of us had any desire none, i don't think any of us have any desire to do anything no. like that no and number three is just go it by yourself uh, as an elected group here now with, uh, and and uh, and set it up without really going back to the membership or uh, and uh, what you would say then is set it up and tell national this is the way that we're going to do a, a, the way the membership want to do it Note the words, set it up without really going back to the membership. And set it up and tell National this is the way the membership wants to do it. The man who is doing most of the talking here is a director who resigned at the board meeting Saturday, August 26, 1972, after four days of discussing this issue. In his own words, and with the apparent approval of the other director, they do not want to take this matter back to the National Board of Directors of which they are members. And you will note that in the conversation, they kept referring to the board as they. Apparently, they did not even consider themselves part of the national organization. Of the three choices their lawyers gave them, they chose, go it by yourselves. Hey, fella, I'd just like to make one comment here. You know, we're, we're condemning somebody for doing something. In other words, making decisions without consulting us as the membership. Now, uh, I'd just like to have you think of something, and that is that if we go ahead with this thing, uh, as elected people here, without consulting the membership, we're as guilty of doing what we're doing as they are guilty of doing what they're doing that we're condemning them. Uh, Ken, I want to ask this question now. The memberships approve this. Then we have to take it to uh, to Corning? No. 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 No, that's what I thought. We didn't have to. You aren't going to have a 10-day notice. We can't afford a 10-day notice. Our zone meeting, our regular zone meeting, is going to be zone, uh, August 7th in Jamestown. Uh, our grain price action meeting is going to be the 9th. We felt that this zone membership meeting and they voting on this resolution should be held August 4th, Friday, August 4th. Zone membership or, or zone member, uh, zone election or our zone meeting. And we think the zone coordinator should contact the county chairman and the county coordinator to set up the meeting. All members be notified by mail on Monday. 
county coordinator and instruct them that this meeting is instruct them to notify their membership of this meeting. They're going to have to notify their membership, the county uh, chairman. Now, what should go on that notice? I have no notes on that. Well, just that we have a special zone meeting uh, uh, August the 4th at such and such a time. All members to attend. I agree. You have to put a reason on that. Yeah, I think you've got to have a reason. got to have a reason. Some of the people on the phone conversation have been highly critical of the board of directors and the national policy, and one of the persons on the conference call is pointing out that they are about to make a decision that could destroy the whole organization, and he is concerned whether it would be right going without consulting the national board, and they are telling him, no, we don't go to them. You will note that the members were not given the customary 10-day notice. You will further note that the meeting notice to the members was not to tell the members that they would be voting on a resolution, even though the machinery to certify the votes was set up. There was a meeting in Wichita, Kansas, on Saturday and Sunday, August 12th and 13th, which was attended by th 23 people including eight directors from six states. Discussions were held as to how to cut off funds from the organization, split off the organization, and divide it. There was a six-day board meeting starting Wednesday, August 23rd, and through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the board was in session all day and into the night. Tapes were played, and excerpts from one of those tapes will follow. This is a report from the notes taken at the meeting by one of those in attendance at the meeting of what went on in the meeting. As soon as this tape was played, one of the board, one of the board members who was in Wichita meeting said, basically, what you have heard is correct. For four days, the board members had every opportunity to deny or correct the description of the happenings at the meeting. They did not and the strategy described to be used in the board meeting and the disruption of the meetings in five marketing areas as has apparently been followed very closely. Listen closely to the excerpts from the tape describing the meeting in Wichita. These plans speak for themselves. Bob Spear chaired the meeting. And when he yoked it up and he started to put it back to Warren Stoffer, then Warren he, uh, I can't, I can't remember the guy's name without looking at him. What's your green up, name up in North Dakota? Sister Ken Spitzer. Ken Spitzer. Ken Spitzer. He was the one that got up and opened the meeting up, and he gave the, the rundown on the, uh, everything that happened in North Dakota. And basically, it was pretty well, uh, what he said was pretty well what, what we've got to happen there. They had set the thing up and had their B and B account up there and and uh, this type of thing and about the zone meetings being set up up there about uh, the home office calling meetings prior to the night their meetings were going to be held to, to vote on the resolution and then he went in and said how that the meetings were totally sabotaged by the home office. And he gave a pretty long spiel. But he didn't get into anything too much in particular. Let me get my notes out so I can go right down there for me. Did he talk about the vote at the meeting? Yeah, he said that uh, the issue was generally cloudy. And that uh, basically what took what taken place was a, an assassination by the uh, uh, of the home office uh, 
a character assassination of him and the rest of the leaders up there. And really, they didn't offer any suggestions, solutions, or nothing. They just talked about their problems. If Warren felt like that uh, the best way to do it would be to cut the funds off from the organization, just absolutely cut all the funds off, then it would make the, the custodial account to float decrease. And at the same time, you would cut down any funds going into the general fund. And when you did that, then this would take the money away from the organization, and then you'd have where you want it. This is the, the route he wanted to go. And that, that meant quit settling. Well, Kansas agreed that was a good route that they had, they had already quit settling. And Texas agreed it was a good route they had quit settling. Now, one of the objects of the whole thing is, is to start driving wages and keep suspicious, suspicion in the home office, okay? The object is, is to get, and this was made plain several times, is to get the only looking out the side of the diet last month, you know, because the last month's coordinating this this meeting they had today, see. Now, you know, this is this is the object of the thing. All right, now then. Somebody was coordinating the meeting we had today. Yeah, down in Wichita. You know, I mean, this is the, this is the type of thinking they were, they're going to try to promote, okay, Gene? In other words, if, if they could, if they could say it enough that last was going to call that meeting down there behind the scenes, okay, then only he's going to start looking at the side of the last one. Or maybe Gene called it, see. But now then, they're gonna, there's going to be a concentrated effort to make everybody in the home office believe that they've got a pipeline in here that just, ain't, just isn't going to quit. And I even talks again. So the thing he thinks we should do is set up custodial accounts in all the marketing areas. There's just not much left anyway, is what he said. And if we set it, of course, then I want to see what happens when we set the custodial account. No, I don't know. Well, whenever they set the custodial accounts up in the area out there, then it stops the money coming in this oh. custodial account up here. Yeah. Okay. Now then, see, they also keep their money. Now then, they, uh, you know, they don't send any check off in or anything. Period. They don't send any of it in. No, just the same identical thing as, as North Dakota. Right. No, no difference as far as what that part of the strategy is. Did you read that resolution? Yeah. They read the resolution yeah. of the meeting. Now, these resolutions are going to be sent out and mailed out in California, Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma. Same thing. Then they start uh, talking about, and I've already discussed this, it's draining off of the general fund. And of course, one way that they're hoping to drain off the general fund is, is, uh, is when they start their meeting. The, the amount of money in the man parts when we throw in those meetings. And the board is a big joke. The board is a farce. We said that. No, Warren Stopper. It's a farce. The board is a farce. The board is a big joke. And this is what they're going to try to do. They're going to, what they're going to do, they're going to, they're going to, the first board meeting is they're going to start her off in a, just that man, if they can. In what manner? A big joke. Big joke. Eight to five, eight to five boys maybe. Get her over there. Give them some time to connive at night. The first thing, the first order of business is going to be to <coughs> vote to exclude everybody from the board except, except the board members, the president and officers. It's going to be the first thing to do. And then to suspend the crop reports, as they call it. But, uh, and then take the department reports, one at a time, on each department. And as the department head starts into his report, in an organized effort, they're going to vote to table his report, stop his report. And they're going to hack him quite a bit. This is, in other words, they're going to plan on disrupting, just uh, disrupting the the uh, the board meeting. Is what 
with their family. So. But they're going to make an effort from now until then to get into ever get into uh, into every district convention and get people on the bylaws and what they're wanting to do. There's a lot of things they want to change. A lot of the bylaws they want to change. And uh, and this is everybody. I mean, it's not just uh, Texas. You know, then the ones want to change it. But this is everybody was there. Okay. Now then, here's here's the steps. See? Step one is to break the custodial account. And then Wednesday night they're going to have their big meeting in the Panhandle of Texas. Tuesday night they're going to start out in South Texas. Uh, Moscow's got a cotton meeting down there, and they're going to call in a conjunction. And then they take care of this week. And they feel like they'll be able to get the barn, the big barn running, get everybody on the road this week. Then they move to California next week for the same type deal. Actually, it, it starts, uh, uh, supposedly, uh, Dick Carey starts it uh, the 15th with a meeting of the zone of Martin Air Bargain Committee members. The 15th. That's Tuesday night, I guess. He, they start laying their groundwork then. And next week, they're going to have you guests there in California. Then the next week, you'll turn around and fly back to Kansas. And that's just what they're saying. So, and they'll have their meetings in Kansas in the next week. And then by this time, they feel like they have to have men to adequate support to North Dakota, that North Dakota will be ready for their city reason. Yes, sir. He won this meeting today. Yeah. He, he, he's going to be the national coordinator of this site. They divided it up so they'd have a communication system. Now, he's going to be the North Dakota coordinator. Uh, uh, Carrier is going to be the national coordinator. But uh, what they're expecting, of course, is the first thing is everybody to be fired. That was at the meeting. And they're expecting that the next board meeting every board member was there to be taken off the board. And then they're, uh, then they're expecting on these area meetings for, for y'all to, you know, to cover everyone. And they, they, say whenever they take the strength out of the country out here, 40, 50 people or 30, 40 people, whatever it takes to cover these meetings, that when they pull these people out of the country, that stops them. Their bills is generating. Most of the members and NFO leaders have always felt that the NFO could not be destroyed from without, but if it should be destroyed, that it would have to be done from within. Both of the national directors from the state of North Dakota, Ken Spitzer and Greg Donners, resigned under fire, and the board of directors refused to seat the alternate, Warren Stoffren, because he too was involved. The National Board of Directors filed charges as outlined under the bylaws for trial procedure against one director from California, two directors from the state of Texas, two directors from the state of Kansas, and one director from the state of South Dakota. The remaining 49 members of the Board of Directors vowed a determined and unified effort to protect the NFO and to call upon the members for united and vigorous support so the NFO can drive ahead faster than ever before. It was a decision of the Board of Directors to take information that they had to the members and to the NFO leaders to make them aware that apparently an organized effort to harm and destroy the NFO was taking place. The losses in progress and in income to the NFO are such that now all NFO members must rally behind the NFO to get the finances in immediately and to meet the financial needs and put their production behind the NFO collective bargaining program.